Hi there, traders. This is Brad Gilbert with the FX Market Insight for Wednesday, the 2nd of September. All right, now, sort of right in the middle of the Asian session, the, uh, let's just do a bit of a backtrack, see what's going on in the end of the New York, New York session. A uh, bit of a risk on sentiment. NASDAQ still going th pretty much through, through the roof, up another 1.5%. The Dow up 076 you know, gives you that risk on profile, but I think that's broken down as we've seen of late. Now, the dollar has actually bounced, right? And uh, it hasn't changed the whole perception of, you know, dollar bearishness. You know, it doesn't change in the day, but it has been put down to the um, uh, a bounce in the manufacturing data, right? Now, this is the inconsistencies of a geopolitical market. We've seen a lot of data come and go, not impact and being high profile. It just so happens that uh, the dollar index came out stronger and it coincided with um, almost euro touching the highs. It's up there through 120, the figure. And um, so we, we end up with a bit of a dollar bounce. Now, what it's done is it's taken a little bit of pressure off that up move, but, and we're in a bit of a crossroads here on the majors. Now, if I just give you a look at the charts, what you end up with when the currencies sort of move, you know, a, a decent length, you start to get these intermediate uh, support and resistance lines sort of coming into play. In this situation, they're, they're mainly support lines. Euro hasn't really done it. But what we've seen is you see this little spike up here, just above 120 the figure. Now, that'd be enough to, to take out quite a few option barriers around 120 the figure itself. Takes the pressure off. You get the strong US or the US data, a little bit stronger. Um, and then, you know, the, the pressure valve is released. Now, the funny thing is, if you have a look at this, right, and you come over here to look at the Swiss. Now, the Swiss National Bank have been talking about intervening. They're pissed off with the fact that the Swiss has, uh, you know, gone through the roof, makes their products, you know, uncompetitive globally. So you see this move here, basically, this, this smells of a, of a bit of Swiss National Bank intervention. Right, you can see how it's stalled there right at resistance and it's just pushed through, but that's a decent bounce in dollar Swiss, right? And I think this may be the real catalyst for that move down here in Euro, right? So just just keep in mind of that. Now the ECB won't mind too, too much if the Swiss are intervening because that drops the value of Euro, makes Euro products more internationally competitive as well. So, but Right here at the moment, we've got this uh, previous resistance line, which is acting as support. I think this is the level to be looking to still get into the um, a euro long position. Now, one US data release does not change the whole trend, right? If this was a major inflation number or employment number, then yeah, sure. Funnily enough, we do have non-farm payrolls Friday, and that is the focus of the Fed. So that could change things quite dramatically. But for now, I think what we're seeing is a little bit of a pause in that dollar weakish out bearish outlook and we should see these currencies come back but in saying that they are at the crossroads just here at the moment you know and it's one of those ones where you're like is are these currencies going to go or not now just to run back through the the data we've had some aussie gdp figures now these were much uh worse than expected um puts the aussie economy in recession I think every economy globally is in recession. So that's not, not the big deal, but the really bearish numbers, that's put a little bit of downside pressure on um, the Aussie itself, right? But still, I still think the uh, dollar, dollar bearishness wins at the moment. So, but we've got a support level here. We've got another one just below it. It's, this is going to be a real test, okay? We've got a little bit of dollar strength, short-term dollar strength. We've got weak Aussie macros, macroeconomic data. Is that going to be enough to push it down a little bit? It, there's potential, but I tell you what, it, it's going to happen the next 24 hours. Um, this isn't a situation where the currencies just trade sideways. It's going to be a flush out to the downside or they're going to come back firm. Now, how do we know what to look at? Well, if I just bring you back to the FX market insights, really comes, this is where the data comes back into play right now. We've seen the, um, the numbers impact now we do have the adp the first employment numbers for the week this is a different stat to the non-farm payrolls don't get confused they're not the same thing but you know some people are saying there's a bit of a correlation i'll tell you what at the moment the market is clutching at anything so just keep an eye on this at the same time this is a really good time for a couple of european numbers to come out if we see really weak german retail sales and weaker spanish numbers 
That fits with that dollar bearish theme. And I think you'll see traders unwind their Euro longs uh, from the start of the week. Right? At the same time, if this, if this data is strong, well, we might see it kick into gear. You know, normal market conditions, this would be the perfect time for this data because the euro has got a bearish short-term outlook. Well, not bearish, but just dipping, a bit, bit of weakness. The numbers, if they're weak, it's an easy trade. If it's strong, it corrects. So that would have been a really good trade in normal markets. But still bear in mind, the macros just at the moment are, are coming into play. And then you've got the ADP non-farm employment. So keep an eye on that now. It's going to be interesting to see how that plays out. If there is any significant variance, what impact it actually has. The uh, major pairs, well, this is the weird thing, right? So you got dollar Swiss and Euro. There's, as I was saying, it smells a bit like Swiss National Bank to me, like a bit of subtle intervention, um, trying to weaken the Swiss. And that obviously pushes down the Euro. The, the overall trends haven't changed. These, these slight moves or shift in the dollar index Hasn't been enough to change the trend. In actual fact, it may give us back, get, a, get us back to good levels to actually get short dollars, right? So think of that. Um, but I, I'd say, look, like right now, it's important that the currencies either bounce or, you know what, I think they're going to correct 100 points. It's one of those precarious situations where they've lost momentum. The major currency pairs have lost momentum and we're now sort of sitting in limbo waiting to see if, if it's going to go up or down. Now, to me, if I just blow up the, uh, the dollar index here, um, if you have a look at this, right? So you've, you, the dollar index, this is on the hourly charts. So it's broken down. Yep, it's come sort of back into the range, but we've got a resistance level here around 92.56. And then the real core, core like tier one trend line is 92.96. So there's a bit of room here for the dollar index still to bounce and still be in that overall downtrend. So don't get too carried away just yet. I think it's in the balance. The ADP numbers may give us a better look at uh, what we uh, should be focusing on. If you have a look at the, um, I mean, the hurricane, obviously old news now, it's sort of come and gone. Um, what you really want to be looking at if you, if you do have uh, Metastock is, is trying to tune up and have a look at, you know, where things like the correlation matrix, is that coming into play? Uh, have a look at the relationship between, look at the US equity markets, okay? normal market conditions is the risk on which you would think Aussie Kiwi and everything bounces, but they're not. So that relationship is broken down and it's important you recognize that before just, you just rush in, right? If I just tune up um, this correlation matrix, see what's impacting across the equity markets. Um, and you look at, uh, you know, where, where the markets are feeling a little bit more confident, you look at gold and silver, they are coming off. Okay. It looks like the market's not so concerned about uh, a lot of, Oh, various aspects. So the S&P, you got Euro, Yen and Sterling Yen. Okay. Once again, use the correlation matrix to guide you into the pairs which are being influenced the most. And it's those two pairs just there at the moment. Um, I think the market's a little bit uh, feeling a little bit better about things, you know, with gold and silver coming off. That's sort of safe haven trade. But just on that, let me just show you um, one other thing that where I can see, I always like to see what's happening and where the pressure valves are. Check out the VIX here, right? Now, let me just blow this chart up. Okay, so we, we are seeing a bit of increase in volatility, right? And this thing looks like it wants to go. This, this tells me that the market's very nervous about something, right? I'd say it's the non-farm payrolls Friday, but, you know, an increase in the VIX means we may see the safe havens kick into gear. Uh, it may be the start of a, of, a, of a dollar move, like increase in volatility. You think, okay, global panic, the US dollar becomes the safe haven, right? So you buy dollars. This could be the start of a dollar move up on a safe haven trade if volatility goes to the roof. I think it's a little bit early to call that, but there is tension in the market. I'd say that's to do with the non-farm payrolls. Um, you know, you look across the rest of the news, it's, it's all the same sort of dribble. Okay, so it's hard to work out, you know, where the epicenter of, of news is. In actual fact, if I just get uh, you across to that, we can have a look. The, um, you know, there's, there's just more commentary about what's happened, which is always good to know, okay, why the dollar's higher. Uh, across the board, there's a bit, bit more stuff about Japan. Now, Japan is, is a news item that fills a void when there's no other news, right? So it's not big news. Um, so just bear that in mind. 
you know, there's a bit of talk about here about the one midpoint, etc. Like most of it is just crap, right? So there's nothing going on. It's the middle of the week, non-farm payrolls Friday. The market's gearing up for some potential for a potential big move, and it's it's crunched. This is really crunch time for the dollar index or the dollar, right? If we, uh, you know, the dollar, I think the non-farm payrolls will determine the next big move. The dollar index is already going down, so to me, the downside would be would be the best outcome for us. But we have to sort of wait and see what the data is before we sort of get really excited, right? Really weak numbers, um, non-farm payrolls would suggest further weakness in the US dollar. That crazy situation may even create a US dollar safe haven situation. And that is, that's why these geopolitical markets are hectic, trying to work out what's going on, right? You're trying to work out, put, put the pieces together, but then there's conflicting components of these. So. Anyway, what you can do is, is focus on the pairs that you can see. Now, of course, we're focusing on the major pairs just for the analysis, but there is a lot of crosses here which are coming into play. You take the US dollar out of it, um, it becomes a little bit easier, right? And one situation where you could be doing this, we've just seen the Aussie GDP figures confirm the recession, weak numbers. It's probably a good time to look across the Aussie crosses and potentially look to get short Aussie against the number of different crosses. That's uh, one, one way to look at it. All right, guys, that's it for me. Have a good trade day. Cheerio.